The story of the bear attack on Matthew Sutton. Sutton spent most of the 2.5 days after the incident in a state of heightened anxiety and half-consciousness. The intensity of the anguish made him lose focus. Medication for discomfort? Just one aspirin in a bottle. His rising core temperature indicated a growing illness. He did his best to stay positive, but the possibility of his death was weighing heavily on him. Well, what exactly happened we shall discuss in the video today only on our channel. When Matthew Sutton went bear hunting on Kodiak Island, he was attacked by a bear. He was attacked several times and left for days before help finally arrived. His life was saved through surgery, and his tale is told here. Sutton, 31, was assaulted by three bears while transporting a deer carcass he had killed to the shore in Vicota Bay near the Rolling Point Cabin, according to Trooper spokeswoman Megan Peters. The bears were a sow and two pups. Peters explained that one of the bear cubs had first pushed the man down before all three bears pounced on him. I assume he screamed something at the bears, Peters added. Wanda Merja, a family friend of Sutton's we contacted at night in Great Falls, Montana, said he had just arrived in Alaska for the hunt. Sutton had bites and scrapes on his arm, leg, and neck, she claimed. Police stated the wounds were minor. The Coast Guard flew Sutton to Providence Kodiak Island Hospital. She stated that Sutton's relatives saw him in the hospital when he was drugged and spoke to him briefly, but they didn't know the whole situation. Merja explained that the bears had attacked the man because he had surrounded them while pulling out a deer. He managed to escape on his own and return to the cabin. Dean Andrew, owner of Kodiak-based charter Andrew Airways, said that Sutton and his companion, Bill Bush, had just arrived in the remote region on Saturday for a week-long hunting expedition. The location is about 10 miles west of Port Lyons. Bush disclosed to Andrew that he witnessed a portion of the incident firsthand. On Sunday evening, as Sutton was making his way down a route on a brush-covered hill carrying a deer he had shot, the bears ambushed him to the foot of the hill close to the water's edge, according to Andrew. The cubs were already two years old, much past the age at which they needed their mother's care, Andrew speculated. Since the bears were only interested in the flesh, they attacked without warning. They gave him a few nice bites before moving on to the deer, his words. While there are numerous bears on the island and considerable human-bear interaction takes place, there are surprisingly few of these. Sutton returned to the cabin, but no one was there to aid him. The soldiers relied on a weak maritime VHF radio and lacked a satellite phone or other means of independent movement. Andrew added that his pilot, Steve Larson, was flying nearby on Tuesday morning but did not respond to their radio calls because he was preoccupied with other matters. Hearing a faint mayday, he flew in to investigate. The man was in too much discomfort for anyone to attempt to transfer him, Andrew said. We'd normally check on our guys midway through but we only put them in there a few days ago, so we haven't had a chance to do so yet. Larson radioed Kodiak to report the incident. Sutton needed professional assistance when relocating, even though the refuge cabin was just around 100 yards from the water where Larson landed his plane, as stated by Andrew. Andrew contacted the United States Coast Guard for assistance and organized a flight of three personnel to go to the scene. Andrew added, I was worried about the head bites and about moving him since the bites ran deep into his neck, down to the bone, and his left arm was all bit up too. It was soon before noon when the Coast Guard received the report, and Petty Officer Wesley Shipley claimed that within minutes, a Jayhawk chopper had been sent from Kodiak. Andrew's plane landed at the same time the other plane arrived to get Sutton to the hospital in Kodiak. The Coast Guard rescuers and Andrew's crew had to load him onto a stretcher and then transport him in the Jayhawk. Sutton was airlifted to an Anchorage hospital, and Merges said his family was making preparations to travel in. That's the video for today. Do like the video and subscribe to our channel for more.